Hi everyone and welcome to the Westpac Social Change Fellowship webinar. I'm Alyssa Nightingale and I'm the Scholarship Program Lead at the Bicentennial Foundation and I'm also joined today by Amy Blacker who's our Communications Manager. So today we're just going to go through a bit of background about the Social Change Fellowship, um, the qualities we're looking for in a Westpac Scholar and then also some tips in regards to the application. Um, we'll take a break halfway through the presentation for questions and we'll also take some at the end as well. And if we don't get time to answer all questions you have today, we'll write them up and then circulate it out of session as well. So let's get started. So the Westpac Bicentennial Foundation was established to support 100 scholarships a year forever. So we strongly believe that Westpac scholars will create a better future for all Australians. And since launching in 2016, we've now awarded 243 Westpac scholars to the value of over 12 million. And now we're currently on the search to discover our next 100 Westpac scholars. So just as a bit of background, I thought I'd just explain that the Westpac Social Change Fellowship is just one of our four scholarship programs. So we also have our Future Leaders Scholarship, our Research Fellowship, our Asian Exchange and Young Tech programs as well. But these four programs are run in collaboration with our university partners and we've had some really incredible scholars for that, those programs to date. So if you have anyone in mind who might fit one of those strings, feel free to promote that as well. But of course today we're focusing on the Westpac Social Change Fellowship and applications for this are open until August 16th. So the Westpac Social Change Fellowship is quite unique in that it backs individuals across Australia who have the drive and innovative ideas to improve the wellbeing of Australians. And just to remember in your application that this is an investment in you as an individual for your professional development. It's not an investment in um, funding your social initiative. So it is designed to give you the time and space to develop your knowledge, skills and networks to accelerate your growth as a social innovator. And so what we do with you is we fund um, a bespoke development plan and um, it could involve elements like um, engaging with national and global thought leaders to training, to mentoring or building stronger connections. So this can all enhance your ability to lead social change. So also the um, social change fellows become part of the Westpac 100 Scholars Network and this grows by 100 new scholars each year. And if you are successful, you'll also be invited to attend the Scholar Summer in Sydney next year in April. So I'm now going to go through the kind of attributes we're looking like in a Westpac Social Change Fellow. This is also listed further in the funding guidelines which are also on our website. So we are looking for people from all walks of life and any sector who have demonstrated commitment and leadership in creating positive social change who are engaged and supported by the community with the, um, what they're seeking to impact. We want the initiative to be innovative and meet an unmet need in the Australian community. We also want um, you to have the ability to collaborate and network to achieve the outcomes. We also really want um, your development plan to be well considered and that you're able to highlight why the fellowship will be a turning point for you and how you can build your capacity to drive social change. So this slide just gives an overview of some of the fellow attributes. So essentially we're looking for individuals with a strong generosity of spirit, those with a desire to give back to Australia, um, who embrace diversity and collaboration and also exhibit excellent leadership qualities. So people like Sarah Yates, who was one of our inaugural 2016 um, Social Change Fellows. So Sarah is a mother of two and wife of a WA police detective. So she's a school psychologist by trade, um, but her life was turned upside down when her husband was diagnosed with workplace-related post-traumatic stress disorder in 2008. So when Sarah needed a network of support and education, imagine her surprise when she realised none existed anywhere in Australia. So in her desperation, she reached out to ABC Radio for others like her, and the floodgates opened with hundreds of people contacting her. This led to Sarah um, beginning alongside, which now operates in over four states and runs proactive education, PTS support services and a community for partners and families. So as part of Sarah's fellowship experience, she conducted a study tour to areas around Australia that were identified as hotspots for frontline mental health issues in the emergency services. So this included towns like Kalgoorlie, Geraldton, Darwin and Alice Springs. 
so that she could better understand how to tailor a long size programs to provide the best support. So Sarah also used her fellowship to work with a storyteller, a CEO mentor, and to train in not-for-profit governance. So she's just one of the 22 amazing social change fellows we've now supported. They all come from very diverse backgrounds and addressing some of the biggest issues facing Australia. And so on our website, we do have profiles of all our social change fellows, and I really encourage you to take a look at that as well. Uh, so the following timeline highlights the key dates for this application round, um, with applications closing on the 16th of August. So first of all, applications all go through an eligibility screening and shortlisting um, stage. And then from there, we um, select the regional finalists and they're invited to participate in a video pitch interview. Then our regional panels will be convening in early October and this panel consists of business, academic and social sector experts. They will then select finalists from their region to be shortlisted for review by the National Selection Panel. And this panel will meet in Sydney in November. And from there, those who are um, selected to be a Westpac Social Change Fellow for 2018 will be approved by the Westpac Bicentennial Foundation Board in December. And successful candidates will be notified at this time as well. So some top level tips around your application. So we really strongly encourage you to read the funding guidelines and facts that are on our website. Um, it covers a lot around what you can do and cannot do with your fellowship, um, common questions that we've received and the attributes that we're looking for in a bit more detail. You submit your grant through the online grant portal and the links on our website for that as well. Please make sure you read through all parts of the questions and we have had um, a hint under the questions to give you a bit more context of the type of response we're after. Also, um, remember to use spell check and grammar and try to avoid acronyms where possible as well. And so we also encourage you to stick to the word limits. Make sure you save as you go as well and use language that is non-specialist so that anyone could understand. And we also really encourage you not to um, refer to the above in your statements um, because some questions are assessed in isolation. So make sure every answer is complete when you do it. And I really encourage you to also spend time uh, articulating your vision and how you will contribute to the growth and prosperity of Australia. We really want you to make your application stand out and resonate with our reviewers as well. And so your development plan is also another key area of the application process that gets a lot of questions as well. So maybe just start off by thinking through your personal development goals. And how does your development plan help you achieve these goals and support you in driving social change? Also, make sure you look at the funding exclusions, which are detailed in the funding guidelines on our website as well. So you can consider whether you want to participate in this fellowship on a part-time or full-time basis, but either way, it must be completed within a six-month period and in 2018. And we also completely understand um, that you'll be likely undertaking the fellowship in conjunction with your other work commitments. And so for overseas travel, um, this must be um, in one single block. And um, we don't um, accept travel to countries that have a level three or four rating by the Australian government, as we do want to make sure your safety is paramount while on your fellowship. Um, fellows must also be covered by appropriate health and travel insurance. And these costs are included in your development plan as well. And so there is also a salary allowance that could be eligible to some um, applicants. So there is a salary allowance policy within our funding guidelines. So have a look at that. Um, but that has to be included within the $50,000 fellowship as well. And per diems while travelling can um, be estimated with reference to ATO's travel allowance rates as well. But if your application is successful, um, we'll work with you at the foundation to complete your development plan. Um, but we do want you to um, put genuine thought into your draft plan and make sure that it highlights um, your development needs as well. So I guess that's the main information that we did want to share with you today. Um, we have plenty of time for some questions. So if you want to write any through, I'd be happy to answer some. Yeah, uh, so I'm asking a question regarding can you return to the application once you start? Ah, and yes, through our grants online portal, you can um, save as you go. Um, so you'll get to the end and it will in advise you to um, go through your application again just to make sure it's all correct. 
um, and then you will submit it. Um, when you submit it, you'll receive an email confirming your submission, your application number, and also a PDF of your application as well. So that notifies you that we've all received it. Uh, yes, we um, can share the pack with you for the slides um, and make them available after this session. Uh, so I'm answering a question in regard to is there someone that you can discuss the application with beforehand. We encourage you to email the Westpac Scholars email address that's listed on our website. Um, we do get quite a lot of inquiries that come through and that's probably the easiest way for us to manage questions, but we will make sure we get back to you in a very timely manner. So I've got a question with are there commitments following the fellowship? So after the fellowship you become um, alumni of the Westpac 100 Scholars Network. Um, so this is an amazing group of individuals which um, we really want the alumni to collaborate and share knowledge and support each other. Um, so I guess that's the main commitment post your um, fellowship and most people um, feedback from our scholars has been this has been one of the most integral and important parts of the fellowship to them. You can also um, become connected with um, Westpac and um, through skilled support. So you might need support around HR or marketing or legal or finance skills. Um, so we can call on the um, great support of Westpac to help you in your programs as well. Uh, so there's a question around do you have to find courses specific to um, our development plan? Uh, so Ideally, you do need to um, have identified the type of courses you want to complete. Um, in regard to courses, we generally say only a week because this is meant to be an um, experiential learning opportunity, not for long degrees or diplomas. Um, but yeah, I, I will do some detailed research in the types of courses you want to achieve. Um, talk to people in the industry that may have maybe done similar programs. Um, and then yeah, if you're, if you're stuck, come to us or email us and um, we can try and assist from there as well. Uh, so I've got a question about um, citizenship. So you have to be an Australian permanent resident and citizen to um, apply for the Westpac Social Change Fellowship. So I've got a question regarding um, someone who is working on an initiative with someone, um, whether they should apply jointly or separately. Um, in our first round, we did have um, Jenna and Aviva from Clickability. Um, they were awarded the scholarship, but they um, were awarded it jointly. So they both applied, um, but then through the selection process, they both proceeded um, on their own merits. Um, but they actually ended up splitting the fellowship between them, um, which they thought was a, um, a great initiative. So you can either, um, I guess, apply separately or you can mention within your application that your colleague has also applied and then if you get to the regional or national panel we can discuss with you whether um, you'd be going together through as a team and splitting the fellowship. So I've got a question around national and international travel and whether it can be done in two blocks. So again, national travel can be done in more than one activity, um, but an international block must be done in one um, activity. Um, that's largely due to we don't want um, all the resources of the fellowship to be covered on international travel, and it is meant to be just a concentrated period of learning as well. But you can undertake domestic travel um, a bit more frequently. Uh, so I've got a question about what if you are currently not a registered not-for-profit. Um, so this fellowship is actually investment in you as an individual. Um, so it's going for, to you as a person. So it's open to someone from any sector or background. Um, so it doesn't matter that um, your organisation is not a not-for-profit. I've noticed, um, got a question about is there an age limit for applications? Um, you must be over the 18 to apply, um, but beyond that, there's certainly no um, restrictions on age. So I've got a question around what is a good referee? Um, so we asked for two types of references. Um, one is an expert reference. This is someone who um, I guess has the skills and knowledge and um, background of your social change issue you're trying to address. Um, and then the community reference is more targeted around someone who has impacted or sees on a local level the impact of what your fellowship's hoping to achieve. Um, so there is a bit more information in the funding guidelines about this, but it's really up to you about who you think would showcase um, what you're doing and your development the best. So I've got a question of do you need to be a Westpac customer to apply? Um, certainly not. So it's open to absolutely anyone and you don't need to be a Westpac customer to apply. 
Yeah, so we've got another question about splitting international travel. Ideally, it really needs to be in, in one block. Um, you can go to numerous countries within that travel, but I guess if you're um, travelling to anchor around a particular conference or training course overseas, then I would suggest doing your um, other field visits and meetings during that period as well. So the question around is the distribution of scholarships equal around the country? Um, so we base that on the applications that come in for the state. So we definitely do have a diversity of applicants around um, the country. It does depend on how many applications we get from each state per year. Um, so it's a bit of a split um, as well. So I've got a question of are there any limitations around the types of topics and social change? Um, no, there are no limitations or other than it can't be aligned um, to a religious or animal welfare or elements like that. Um, but beyond that, it just has to really show that it's going to have um, a far-reaching impact to improve the well-being of Australians. Uh, so I've got a question around the professional development and um, maybe it's not offered at the moment but they want to do it in the future. Um, so you need to identify activities within your professional development that you can undertake within 2018. So if programs don't exist through your research, um, you will need to come up with alternatives or maybe have a chat to us about um, the type of development programs you're after. Um, so maybe feel free to email me any specific questions around that offline and I can get in touch. Uh, so detailed breakdown of costs when applying. We do definitely expect you to have the um, high level items itemised within your, your um, development plan and budget. So whether this included some approximate travel costs based on the countries you hope to visit, the cost of some training programs or mentoring programs, um, some thought of the different places you um, want to visit or um, if you need some per diems. And so we do a high level summary of I guess the big chunks of funding that you want to um, have allocated to your professional development. So I have a question of does it need to be backed by research? So a key question within the application is have you done um, sufficient research regarding your area? Um, so that's more to identify whether it is a social need and what's being done in this space, um, whether you've established um, a bit more rigour in around how you're approaching your social change idea. Um, but I guess if the question is referring to academic research, um, then no, it doesn't necessarily. Um, but we do expect that you as an individual have done a good level of research into your topic. So I've got a question around, um, is the fellowship awarded um, based on the gravity of the social change initiative? I guess um, an element of the selection process is how um, beneficial the social change program that you're leading will have on Australians. But this is very much an investment in you as an individual. Um, so throughout the um, selection process, we're really looking for your leadership qualities um, and to lead social change. Um, we completely understand that the social change initiative you might be leading now might not what be your leading in 10 years or five years time. And even as a result of the fellowship, you might um, change course and direction. Um, so that's why it's really an investment in you. But I guess your program must be of strong need and value to Australian society. So I've got a question about the six month period of the fellowship. So yes, you're able to determine within 2018 um, when you're able to do that six month period. So it does vary between our fellows. Um, ideally, you do well. You do need to be available early April um, for the Scholars Summit in Sydney, um, and you probably will get access to your fellowship development funds around late January, early February. Um, so that probably gives you an idea of when you can um, start and complete the fellowship activities. Uh, so I've got a question about how detailed um, of the social change program that you're leading in the application. So there's a few key questions about um, in the application. You can um, log on and just have a preview of it um, around what is your social change program, how is it innovative, um, what progress that you've done to date. Um, so that they're the, top, the key questions that we're after to learn a bit more about the social change program that you're running. So we've got a question around environmental priorities. So it is eligible to some degree, um, just to, I guess it has be more focused on improving the well-being of Australians. So if you have a bit more, if you want me to provide a bit more information on that, um, maybe send me an email and I can have a little bit more look into the social change program you're running. 
so I've got a question around the video pitch, which is um, the finalists that get to the regional um, selection stage. Uh, so what this happens is it goes through um, Westpac's online video interviewing service called Sonru. Um, we'll be calling all the applicants and emailing them a pack with instructions and a guide of what we hope you, a suggestion of what to include in the video pitch. Um, you also have a week to, commit, um, to complete it, so then you can ask any questions before completing it if you're not quite clear. So I've got a question regarding reporting of the successful candidate. So um, at the end of your fellowship, so which will be um, so probably January 2019, um, we'll get in touch to get a top level fellowship report from you and we'll also give you a short survey to um, complete um, just to learn more about your experience, um, how your leadership and skills development has um, improved and your engagement in the Westpac 100 Alumni Scholars Network. Um, we don't want to make reporting too onerous. Um, we also do encourage fellows to keep the top level receipts um, of the larger items that they've got within their fellowship um, just for, a, for more of an um, auditing perspective. Uh, so I've got a question regarding um, is the funding um, either the set $50,000 or what's in the development plan? Uh, so it's what's in the development plan, so it's up to the value of $50,000. Um, not all of our scholars exhaust the $50,000 um, funding and that's completely fine. Um, and we will work with um, finalists once they've been selected on their individual development plans as well. So we've got some question around uh, is feedback provided to unsuccessful um, applications. So we certainly do let everyone know personalised feedback for those candidates that do get to the regional and national um, panel selection. Um, due to the volume of applications we're anticipating to receive, um, all other applications will get more top level feedback. Um, and if from there you still need more detailed feedback, um, you'll be able to get in touch with us and we'll do that on a case by case basis. So I've got a question of do you need an ABN and that's um, no um, because this is going to you as an individual. Um, so it's going um, yeah, not to your organisation but to you. Uh, I've got a question is can you self fund um, if you want to go back overseas? Um, that's completely fine um, if you're able to fund this out of your pocket. Um, we strongly encourage you to do um, more research and networks and collaboration activities. Uh, so if you've been shortlisted for grants, would that be another an issue? Um, that's no, and um, I guess that might be more your organisation might have been shortlisted for other grants. So no, um, it's completely fine to put in your CV or in the application where appropriate what other funding you've received, um, but it won't be an issue. So I've got a question around the social outcomes and if uh, it has to affect all of Australia or regional level. Um, to answer that, it can definitely be regional. Um, it can be a local level, state or national. Um, you're asked that question in the application as well. Um, but yeah, it doesn't have to affect the whole of Australia. Um, it can be quite localised. Got a question of, is it open to people with disabilities? Um, yes, it certainly is. Um, so we do encourage um, anyone to apply. And if you have any um, issues with the application selection process, um, please do get in touch um, with us. Uh, so I've got a question if, if you can put in two applications for two separate ideas. Um, the answer to that is no, so it has to be focused around, um, I guess, one particular idea or it's because it's around your individual development. Um, so just one application um, is available. Uh, so it's how is this social change divine, defined? Um, so I guess we're really looking for um, a project that is improving the wellbeing of Australians. So that can be quite vast. Um, so don't really put too many limitations on that topic um, other than what's um, in the funding guidelines as exclusions areas. I would encourage you to have a look on our website at the Westpac Scholars to date under the Social Change Program because um, this really varies from people looking at mental health issues to um, disability leadership to um, substance abuse in Australia to building more cohesive societies through urban planning. Um, so as you can see it's quite a vast topic range. Um, so yeah, it's more how you articulate the need for it um, to Australia. 
So got a question around the development plan and is what you submit final. Um, no, what you submit is not completely final, but it's pro it is a very well developed version of your development plan. Uh, so in December and January we will work with the individuals, um, connect them with previous scholars, um, other networks within Westpac um, to make sure you get the most out of your fellowship. So we'll discuss that at that stage. So, But we do really want you to put um, a bit of effort and thought into your development plan. So. Um, that we can adequately review throughout the process. So I've got um, a question of how outcomes are to be demonstrated. So when you begin your fellowship, we'll give you a template of the report that we're after at the end of your fellowship to keep in mind. Um, but we're really after it to improve your individual capacity to lead social change. So we want um, the outcomes more to be focused on your individual development, um, your leadership development, how you've been able to collaborate with others, the new learnings you've achieved, um, how you're going to drive your social change forward um, as a result of the fellowship. Um, so it's really outcomes based on your individual professional development. So we've got a question about um, tax. Um, as this fellowship is um, funding towards you as an individual, um, we do recommend that you do get um, tax advice from any accountant that you might um, have. Um, but as the fellowship draws down, as an expenditure-based fellowship, um, so you should exhaust all the funding, or you, you are expected to exhaust all the funding you receive from the fellowship application, um, but it is going to you as an individual, so on a case-by-case -case basis, we um, encourage you to look at that with an accountant. So I've got a question of how many applications we're anticipating to receive. Um, so we're anticipating to receive over about 300 applications um, this year. Uh, so I've got a question of, can the fellowship topic be a continuation of an ongoing project? Um, yes, it certainly can. Um, we do expect that your social change initiative has been in operation, um, that it's not just an idea or concept stage. Um, so ideally it's an ongoing project that you've researched and have been working on and have got support from the community you're hoping to support. So there's 10 fellowships that are available this year and they're valued up to um, $50,000 each. Uh, so I've got a question about spirituality and religious denominations. So maybe get in touch with me um, individually just to talk through that more. So basically we just um, don't support any issues um, around the, that promote religion, animal welfare, change in law or government policy. But definitely something around um, broader spirituality we could um, consider. Um, so feel free to get in touch with me individually and I can discuss that with you further through the Westpac Scholars email address. Uh, so I've got a question just um, around the recording. So we will put a recording of this on the website. Um, we'll also go through and look at all the questions that came through just to make sure we didn't miss any. Um, and then if we did, we'll circulate the responses to that um, out of session as well. Uh, so will the scholarship be available again yes, next year? Um, yes, it certainly will be. Um, so this opens annually around the same time each year. So around June, July opens for applications, um, so we award 10 um, fellowships each year. I think that's it. Well, um, thank you so much for joining us today and for your interest in the Westpac Social Change Fellowship. Um, we really wish you all the best with your application and um, we can't wait to read about all the amazing work that you're doing. So thank you. <laughs>